Let's take a closer look at how JavaScript code gets executed. JavaScript was initially designed to run within web browsers, and each browser has a JavaScript engine. This engine is built in into most major browsers. These are engines like V8 on Chrome, or JavaScript Core on Safari, SpiderMonkey on Mozilla, or Chakra on Microsoft Edge, and many other JavaScript engines that run within web browsers. And it's basically a software that lives within your web browser and it's responsible for executing our JavaScript code. Let's see how this actually works. So first you write your JavaScript code and once the JavaScript file is received by the browser, the engine starts to compile your JavaScript code. But before compiling it, it first parses your JavaScript code. This means that it converts the source code into tokens. And tokens are just small units like keywords like let, const or function keywords and operators, literals and identifiers. And then this JavaScript engine parses these tokens to create the abstract syntax tree. The next step is the compilation step. So modern JavaScript engines like V8 use a technique called just-in-time compilation. And this means that it compiles our JavaScript code into a machine code so that it can be executed. And after that we get to the execution step. And this is when we will see the effects of our code in the browser. So in this step the engine starts to interpret our JavaScript code which is then executed by the JavaScript virtual machine and once it is executed we will see the effect on our web browser which is like Google Chrome, Safari, Microsoft Edge and any other major browsers and once it is executed it also goes through garbage collection step it periodically scans and cleans up the unused variables and unreachable memory and in the last step we have the event loop. Basically since JavaScript is single threaded, meaning it cannot perform time consuming operations synchronously, we have this event loop. And this event loop continuously checks the call stack and message queue for asynchronous operations that are finished. And it notifies the call stack so that our asynchronous code can be executed. Now let's see how JavaScript works in the browser in development mode. And development mode is basically when you develop it on your computer and this is not deployed anywhere so you're trying this code in your machine. And that's why we call this development mode meaning that we run it on our own computer and our files are not yet optimized for the production server. So first you write your code like HTML, CSS and JavaScript in your code editor which can be VS Code or something else. Then you launch the live server extension or you just manually refresh every time you make changes. And this starts the local server on your computer. And then when you open the HTML file in the browser, it fetches the associated CSS and JavaScript files from your local live server. And once your browser receives the JavaScript file, this is when JavaScript engine comes in and it reads your JavaScript code, understands it and then executes it, which then brings your web page to life. So this is how we typically work in development mode in our computer. Now let's see how this works in production. When your application is ready to go live, you'll optimize these HTML, CSS and JavaScript files and you'll deploy it to a web server. This is just a remote server that will hold your HTML, CSS, JavaScript files and it will serve this to the users. And let's say some user comes in and opens your web page. When they visit your website, their browser sends a request to your server and it receives the HTML file that has the content and then it fetches the associated CSS files and also the JavaScript files. And again, just like in development mode, when browser receives the JavaScript file, here is where JavaScript engine comes in and it starts to execute your code and it creates the interactive experience for the user. As we saw, JavaScript was initially designed for browsers only, meaning it was only meant to run inside of the browsers. But then in 2009, Ryan Dahl took this JavaScript engine and he placed it inside of a C++ program. And by doing this, he introduced Node.js, which is a different runtime of JavaScript. So he basically took the V8 engine from Chrome and he embedded it inside of a C++ program. And now this allows us to run JavaScript anywhere outside of the browsers. We can now run JavaScript on servers or on desktop apps or any other environments outside of the browser. And this is what made JavaScript way more popular in other areas of development other than browsers. So obviously you can build front-end web apps with JavaScript and this is what it initially was designed for. But you can also build server-side applications or APIs or real-time applications like chat apps or command line tools with it. 
You can even build mobile apps with it by using frameworks like React Native, which allows you to use JavaScript to create cross-platform mobile apps and then distribute it to both iOS and Android phones. You can also build desktop apps with it. You can use tools like Electron, but you will still use HTML, CSS and JavaScript that you know from web development and you can build desktop apps with it. You can use frameworks like Phaser, which offers advanced capabilities and build browser-based games and run them inside of the browsers. So there are a lot of things that you can do with JavaScript and once you know the basics of JavaScript you can easily transition to building mobile apps or backend development or games or anything you could imagine.